Would you like to not only thrive, but thrive on purpose? Then this podcast is for you, inspiring you to embark on a transformational journey. Your host is Elena, and she's looking forward to enabling you to thrive on purpose. Episode 4, How Purpose and Impact Magnetize Your Brand, with Luke Vecini. Luke Vecini is the founder of a branding agency called The Sponge that specializes in helping the next generation of business owners rebrand with purpose. He was born and raised in Sydney and now lives in Brisbane. Since starting his professional brand design journey in 1999, he has helped thousands of people put their brands on the map. He started the sponge right out of college and has learned what it takes to grow a business. While beginning as a trained graphic designer, the entrepreneurial leap took him on a path of transformation. He experienced firsthand the impact that purpose and values have in business and the connection to brand story. Having had a purpose moment that transformed his outlook on business, the sponge obtained B Corp certification in January 2017. Luke is a firm believer that business can and should be a force for good. Well, Luke, thank you so much for accepting my invitation to be my guest at the Thrive on Purpose podcast series. Welcome. And um uh, I'm very curious. I have a favorite question to to start with. What's the best thing that happened to you since we last spoke, which was, I think, two weeks ago? Oh, the best thing. Um, That is a really good question. And uh, I think it would have to be that I have um picked up a book that's been on my shelf for quite some time i haven't read it for years and i'm reading it again with with a new lens hmm. yeah and what's that book it's think and grow it's... rich okay all righty yeah so um what new things are you finding there it's 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 forced me or given me a, a gentle nudge to redefine uh, what it is that I want and be very clear about that. So I've, I've been on cruise control for a while, focusing on purpose and business, but not with a clear, crystal clear vision for all elements of my life. So this weekend, actually, I've carved out a big block of time to um, go through the work workbook that's come with it the audio book version of it the physical version as well but i'm Mm -hmm. going i'm going to be spending some time redesigning my life sounds very inspirational and amazing i was actually on that page a year ago uh, when i did the life book covering 12 years uh, of my life and I did this process for a few months, very thoroughly, like I was um, writing a chapter every day. And it's really wonderful because I believe holistic, having a holistic, clear vision for life is super important. Sometimes clients say, okay, I want to work on career or I want to work on my relationships, but everything is interconnected. Everything is interconnected totally, and um, it like it's like the universe is conspiring for me to do this. So, you know, I've 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 got another piece of software that I organise. I bought recently, and it's been sitting there for me to do, which is Mind Movies, which uh, Dr. Joe Dispenza talks about. I was like, yes, I've got to do that. So, I need to put some thinking around that. And then I was reminded I've got this post on my blog about. Tony Robbins and Tony Robbins time of your life program which talks about RPM and I dug like somebody asked me to do an updated version I was like oh, I've been meaning to do that because I, I showed how to use a software tool for that, that doesn't exist I mean there wasn't one that they created 
And it's like, all right, I'm getting these pushes. So this week is, this weekend is a combined aspect of those things. Like, who am I as a, as a family man? Who is a, who am I in my religious um, nature and spirituality? Who am I in my uh, community? Who am I in my business? All of these elements that you're right. If you negate or neglect one, the others suffer because you're not full self. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I really congratulate you for this step. It's super exciting. Mm. Wow. <laughs> yeah. It is amazing. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And of course, today we're going to talk about a purpose. This is a topic I've been drawn to and it became a center of my work as a coach as well. Um, so I'm really curious what what was that big moment in your life that really really triggered you to embark on a purpose led journey look mm, yes i call it my purpose moment and um a bit of context is that i have um i have been very good at being bad i grew up in a broken home i um was very much in the dark side and I'm not going to go into that, but I was very good at being bad. I started my agency because I wanted to party. I wanted to make money and um, enjoy all the expensive things in life. And I did. I, I was doing that and it was fine for many years, 16 for, to be exact. And then it just so happened that one summer day it's in Sydney where I was it was a December late December and I was sitting there in my villa I remember the doors open getting the breeze off the bay and I was just flicking through Netflix for something to watch as you do I hit play on something it was unremarkable but just looked watchable now to that point I'd never actually stopped to think about the true cost of things supply chain what is this i never you know, sitting there with expensive watch expensive clothes you know are surrounded by expensive things with no idea how they were made and this documentary was called the true cost and it was a fast fashion expose and it revealed all the senseless deaths in the Dhaka building collapses the pollution of ecosystems, devastation of industries and, and trade in countries, the whole ripple effect of fast fashion's race to the bottom for cost. And I was sitting there in tears, feeling like a, a hypocrite. And before it was done, I was done. I'd made up my mind I was not going to work with brands that were about profit at all costs. That sent me, that was, that was my purpose moment. I fired um, most of my clients, imploded my business and uh, started again as uh, a values-driven, purpose-led organisation that only wanted to work with businesses that have a positive impact in the world. So, mm, wow, yeah. impressive. So maybe this means that you are ready for this? And uh... Oh, yes. So... You know, that was, that was the catalyst moment, the purpose moment, but there was a lot of things that had led up to that. So it's not always one thing, but that's the, you know, there was, I'd had um, conscious awakenings and, you know, I, I wasn't like bad, 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 all of a sudden good. Like I was, I was lightning, 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 and then that, the penny mm. dropped and it was like, okay, cool, all right. Mm. Um, yeah. The tipping point, yeah. That's a good way to say if it. I may, yeah, yeah. <laughs> tipping point, your purpose moment. I love this expression, your purpose moment. Mm. Yeah, because as you said, I believe that we are getting ready for this moment, but then there is something like uh, a trigger and then then you experience it and, and then it, it happens. Just, aha, mm. okay, let me rethink. Let me, let me start all over again. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's not always a grand thing either. It, it, it's different for everyone. Not everyone's going to have this like um, tearjerker moment where life will never be the same. 
you know, it could be, it, it, it's a journey. Everyone's got their journey. So there's no right or wrong there. For me, that's what I Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And um, since then, you've been really consciously growing a, a brand, uh, I would say a thriving brand. And what were your biggest challenges as an, an entrepreneur while building that purpose, <laughs> purpose-led purpose brand? Yes, the big, first big challenge was I was very polarized in the beginning. I was, there's, you're either an angel or a demon. There's nowhere, no in between. And that meant that it was um, basically watching tumbleweeds roll by because um, I didn't want to work with anyone that was not, you know, the angel. So that was, that was, that was one challenge. Second, you know, that there was a journey there and an evolution, and we'll probably cover that a bit. The other is uh, how to ensure both team, potential team members, and clients are values aligned. Yeah, that that's that's been a big part of the journey. So we've got a very good process now. Uh, it's it's pretty robust and it works. In the beginning, in the beginning, there wasn't really a way. So there was a lot of trial and error, and wrong, oh. wrong hires and wrong clients. But now, yeah. understand. And how long did it take you to to learn, if I may say so, this alignment process? Uh, well, I'm a big believer that you never stop learning. <laughs> We have yeah, we yeah, have yeah, yeah. yeah we have the best current version now, but uh, I think we sorted that out probably now about two years ago. So we our, as we we had relaunched as a purpose driven organization in twenty sixteen. So it's like four years, three years. Three years to sort it out. Three years, yeah, yeah. I agree with you that we we, we constantly learn, and and that's always a process. However, and I've experienced this with myself, when you look back into the years and see your work, let's say five years ago, and say, oh wow, see where I've been and how I've progressed. Um, And uh, I do believe in in learning by experience and taking the time to reflect after each experience. So, to to see what's the learning here, how how we have grown, and to be honest, that's a challenge. Values alignment, purpose alignment is is a challenge of each organization I've I've worked with. So that's why I, I'm 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 very curious about this process because I I follow the sponge for a long time and I, I can claim and that's for myself that you're super inspirational and you're very conscious and really purpose-driven you live that um, so um, that that's that's super important and what else was a challenge for you as well during that journey the biggest challenge is that we've the market wasn't really as open to purpose and impact in the beginning. There's been a massive shift. Thanks to COVID, I think it's really um, forced the humanizing of brands. That and some of the critical issues that have happened around the world, like Black Lives Matter and um, the Me Too campaign, all these things that are bringing humanity to the fore and equality and inclusivity and diversity, all of those things that matter, that it's brands have been forced to um, confront and adapt. And in, in that, it has opened the conversation that we love to have. So now there's a groundswell. So if we talk about addressing internal culture and storytelling that, which is what we what we've been doing in the beginning and, and coming to terms with and getting better at to now the markets there's an appetite for it and it's really it's it is now current day that consciousness in business 
So those mm. are, those those would be the bigger challenges. So. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. I can resonate with this completely. Uh, it's about maturity. Are the clients really ready for such a journey? And I completely resonate with what you say that COVID uh, has opened up more companies to think about purpose and, and, and really rethink and live their values. Uh, I definitely experienced many conversations with my clients during the last 18 months on purpose. Um, that's very, very true. So obviously this movement is, 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 is um, going further and, and I want to touch on this and um, business is a force for good as we develop this conversation. But now I would like to know, be, because definitely you are a person who is going um, consciously through a transformational journey, how did this inner transformation support you in building your brand? Yeah, that's a good that's a good question, a good frame. Um, I found that doing the work as as an owner of a business or a founder of a business or a leader of the business, when you define your culture, when you define your brand, your purpose, your impact, it's a very personal thing, and in that process, as you would know, there's, there's a mix of who we are, but who we aspire to be. It's the same as the personal journey is who, who am I, but who do I want to be? And I found that in the process of developing our first core set of values five years ago, there was an aspirational one there that uh, we all love. It's, it's perpetuate goodness, right? And it is, it is about, it is a, like, perpetuate that word is is proactively pushing driving it's not just not just do good wherever you are but it's push it it's it's be the the driving force of it and in that process of defining a value of how we operate as a sponge that value has really become in this five years what i'm about like as a as a bigger picture almost like a personal purpose I don't know that it is my personal purpose because I haven't. Maybe that's maybe that's part of my journey for this weekend, right? Is is defining a personal purpose, but um, it it that journey of 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 that and my um, oh, the other cha- another challenge. Someone, what's come up there because it's it's bubbling at the surface is. That in in defining who we are and who what we will accept as far as clients and work, it's it's put that um, frame of what we'll say no to, what we have to say no to to remain to remain aligned with our values, and the spin it has meant turning down millions of dollars of work, and and that comes to how. I as a leader, as the uh, yes or yes or no, as far as will we accept this or will, or won't we, is trusting how I feel internally. You know, the gut and the heart, like intuition and and purpose, is doing that work. Is not who I am. I will not accept that. I cannot. I cannot feel that way, and I cannot do work that makes me feel that way. So my personal. My, my personal transformation is I will not accept things that doesn't make me feel light, doesn't, um, I want to feel elevated by the work that I do, not be, not feel resistance from it. So does that yeah. answer the question in a way? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. In a way it makes sense and it makes me feel um, and think uh, that we're, we're founders of, of businesses and um very often the purpose of the business is very aligned with our own purposes in a way it's it's just one thing because it's the essence it's it's the core it's who you are so you cannot be different in your business and different in your personal life does this make sense to you yeah the, it, it does it really does and the interesting thing there is that um it can 
as a founder, as you, your team grows and as, as you want to embrace them, uh, I've been called on this with, by my team just recently. We went through the process of redefining our purpose. And that started by me just wanting to broaden our purpose a bit because I, I found myself called to, to include... Uh, so our purpose statement was to help good businesses become better brands, which is more of a mission statement, describe what we do. But it wasn't, it, wasn't, it wasn't aspirational enough. And I found that as I matured and as we developed our methodology, it was more, um, how do we help more people? So I started saying, um, we help all good businesses become better brands, which that all broadens things. But then one of my team called me and I said, like, before you do that, why don't you run the purpose workshops that you do with clients with us and we'll, we'll feed into it. And honestly... That, when you talk about a, a founder and a leader or owner of the business where you have final say and it is very much you because you're the chief vision holder or motivator or whatever you want to, whatever label you want to call for that particular aspect, is you have to be willing to kill your darlings. Heard that, mm. you've heard that phrase? Like it is. No. It, well, it's, it's a, Phrase talking about copy, right? You have to be willing to sacrifice and just and cross out your best work for the better outcome. And uh, so, yeah, our, our new purpose is a culmination of the amazing work we did as a team. And honestly, this was the most beautiful, uh, liberating. It brought tears to my eyes. This process um, and the responses that the team contributed. When I saw answers coming from them in our framework that could have been my words and some of them even better than my words, I was like, oh, like it was, it was I don't know, I felt like a, a proud dad. I felt like a, you know, a, I don't know. Just it was amazing, right? So we've got this, um, this awesome aspirational new purpose statement and it is designed by our team. It's shaped by our team. And it's meaningful for us, and it's like it is very not driven by me, which which is which that difference, you know. Yes, I yeah, I, I yeah, love it, yeah. and it speaks to how I would say it, but it's come yeah. from a team. Yeah, because you you you're one, you you're a whole mm. uh, one. It's it's the oneness, it's the interconnectedness. Because obviously you've attracted the right people that resonate with uh, who you are and your values. And it's very natural when you create the conditions for these conversations to take place is that you'll be positively surprised. I could sense your emotion and your energy while you we were talking about it. And uh, can you again uh, please articulate the purpose of the sponge? Uh, the the new purpose of the sponge. The new purpose, the new yeah. pu purpose of the sponge. Yeah. Yes, I, I want to give you some context first, so that it makes sense. Okay. And, and I'm, I'm okay. I I will have um, over the weekend published a or finished a post that talks about the journey and where we've come from. My my idea for this. Well, our idea for this new purpose is that it needs to be something we don't change for for fifty years. It's the wow. umbrella. It's 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 a bigger statement. Um, our the impact that we want, and we probably will cover this in a bit more detail. The mm -hmm. that's that's evolved over time, and we do certain things. We've got initiatives. The outcome that we want is that everyone that we meet, every organisation that we meet evolves their brand and for us it is culture is your brand so we do that as the foundation and then we do the cosmetic stuff on top so there's no point throwing a flag up saying look at me if there's no awesome story meaningful story to tell so the foundation helps us drive that but in that process when you help a brand realign their culture you create a space an environment where every individual can thrive and using your word there thrive and thriving means that their creative and discretionary energy is unleashed their full potential is, is they shine right so it's like it is fulfillment for everyone in that organization that means moving people out of course and it means that when you do that the right people 
uh, are safe. There's an environment of trust. There is an environment where everyone can revel in their skills and in their natural talent. So I want everyone, yeah, everyone in every organization that we work with to reach their ultimate potential. They have real fulfillment in life. Happy at work, happy at home, happy communities, that whole ripple effect. Right? So this, this, is, this is the vision for the impact. We haven't worked out how we're going to measure that yet because impact measurement is a huge challenge. So this is, this is just the best current version of how we describe what we're about. Right. And for a, for a branding, for a branding agency, that doesn't really make sense, right? You wouldn't hear that. Like most branding agencies, like a message that cuts through or a, a logo that represents that. Yeah, we do that. But if we can get the, the organization buzzing and we do, like we have, there is like a ridiculous palpable energy. And you know this when you get a culture I, like yeah. popping, it is like you can feel it. Like you can, like, when the team's yes. on Zoom, it doesn't matter. You're like, whoa. Oh, yeah. All right. All right. Uh, yeah. That is, that is like something freaking amazing. I love, I love your vision is super bold. I love that. And, 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 and that was my next question. But obviously you answered that. What, 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 what vision is really keeping you inspired and, and, and have this palpable energy and this fueling energy. It's a big vision. And I love that, and I think that what what that's what attracted me to uh, communicate with you is that you're not a typical branding agency. Actually, the work you do is very holistic, and it's very interconnected with uh, what we do uh, in terms of helping companies really have this palpable energy and thrive. And as I love to say, obviously, that's the, the also the, the title of the podcast series, Thrive on Purpose, meaning that they thrive, but at the core of this thriving is a shared meaning. There's this purpose that people are aligned with. Yeah, that's it. And um, purpose, it is it is the the gel, it's the connector, it's the magic. When it's, when it's shaped right and uh, someone like you, I know, handles that beautifully, there is an old school of thought, and um, I'll tie it to uh, Simon Sinek's Start With Why. Great book back in the day. Uh, and it was something I would refer people to to get them start thinking about that. But with the uh, proviso that you need, it's not just about being a great artisan. You have to have a noble purpose, a noble cause. And his new book, Infinite Game, which came out, last year I think it was, he addresses that. It is essential that you have a noble cause and it's that nobility, that's what that's what people are connecting with, resonating with. So purpose, not just purpose on its own, but the real richer human purpose. So Yeah, 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 yeah completely, completely resonate with that uh, and, and that's why it is in your purpose statement, the good you do. Well, that's what is important. Mm. Okay, let's talk about magnetism. <laughs> <laughs> I love that word. So when the concept of electromagnetic brands was born? Yes. Yeah, so COVID gave a little bit of a breather because the first thing that happened here around the time of the toilet paper fiasco, did you get that over there? Did, did people go crazy and clear the shelves? Yes, yeah, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Absolutely. That, that, that was in Australia only, I think. It, it happened here, yeah, and it happened in the US, I think, as yeah. well. It's like ridiculous. Ah, okay. Um, I, I don't, I, I don't, I don't understand what. Anyway, so around that time, <laughs> so yeah, I, I see that as a defining moment. There was like people, people felt that they needed, they would do me needing to go to the toilet a lot, and I guess they tightened their um, their marketing sphincter as well so budgets <laughs> budgets went a little a little frozen and um okay that, that gave it and the first thing yeah first thing in a crisis with a business is they stop spending on marketing which is a dangerous game to play but it's kind of like a knee-jerk reaction so we, we were given a bit of uh, fear and um yeah. and space to breathe and it really my previous book uh, impact brand storytelling impact impact brand storytelling it's it's a yeah. great methodology it's still 
very much what we do, but it gave this gave me a chance to uh, this time gave me and the team a chance to revisit our methodology and see how we could make it a little bit more palatable to uh, organizations or people that weren't as um, niche. Uh, so the, there's a phrase I use, the curse of knowledge. It's not mine. It's I think Stephen Pinker uh, from Harvard coined it. And what it means is when you assume wrongly that people understand things the same way as you because you know some things intuitively. Like you know them so well that you assume others know them. Right? So Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so... Assumption, the, that's just an assumption. It's assumption, yeah. So, and that's a big problem and it happens with across all marketing. Um, anyway, you gave, us the opportunity, gave me the opportunity to really contemplate what, is the, what are the big problems that we solve and there are three sort of core problems. But the main thing is that, and the, and what are the solutions for those? But what is the what does that mean as the main problem for business owners today? And what is the prize that we want? And the prize was the fun part. So if you're thinking about business as a grind, like if you're an owner of a business or a founder of a business and you're experiencing um, slower or um, more difficult sales, right? Mm-hmm. Things are things are changing because the market's changing, and you're not. You're experiencing a dis- disengaged or demotivated team, right? And there's also potentially a lack of pride or some embarrassment about your brand. Those are t- the typical main problems, and that's because the brand doesn't truly represent the organisation as it is because it's evolved. Right? Those are the main problems. What are the flip side for that? It's like yeah. a compound customer growth of like of an audience that loves you and can't shut up about you. The other one is like a fully engaged and hyper-productive team. And the third is like unshakable pride in your brand. So those things, they're kind of the foundation for an electromagnetic brand, a brand that effortlessly pulls awesome people to it. So new customers and new team members. And when they stick, they stick for good. It's, like just that vision of that electromagnet in the car yard that is like picks up a car and you know yeah like that's the yeah. pull, that's the pulling power that when you get yeah. these things right and we're talking about get mm-hmm. your get your culture right get your impact model mm-hmm. right get your audiences right understanding who they are speaking to them and building a mm-hmm. strategy that connects mm-hmm. the dots there so when you get that all right, that's when your brand is electromagnetic. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I was very attracted to uh, from the impact model uh, when I read your your book. And um, since that moment, which was see and a half ago, I started thinking of my impact model, and it's on paper. It's 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 vision on paper. And now that I'm starting to attract the team, I want to make this real. And this is definitely an area, and as if your report uh, was outlined, that I need to work. I'm curious, what's the sponge's impact model? Because I definitely can learn from this. And it's, 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 for me, to be honest, I know culture is very important and living and breeding culture, but also I understand how important the impact is for a company to be a natural magnet uh, and to create goodness in the world. So what's the sponge impact model? Yeah, so first first and foremost, um, impact is hard. So it is a hard, it's hard, it's a journey, and it is, for us, it's been a journey. We started with, uh, the first thing I wanted to do was a very personal thing, so we sponsored orphans. Right. And mm. um, we do, we continue to because it's a long-term thing and it's a, I believe that if you have the means, you should because there are people out there that need care and uh, they need love and they need food and they need all of that goodness. So we've got some that we will continue to sponsor until they're um, grown up and don't need our help anymore. But mm-hmm. the challenge, and this is the big challenge, it has nothing to do with our business. So while it's mm. not while it's nice, and it's a good human thing to do, the telling the story of that isn't connected to what we do. We're not about um, that's the, it's not what we do, right? So it, there's a disconnect, and 
I find that a lot with organizations that if there if there is not an authenticity about it and a relevance, it can actually be seen as a tactic and it loses the power, it loses the the benefit of doing it. I mean, the reason why we do it is why we do what we do and where we're at with it now is that we believe that all businesses that want to be good for the world should be able to have a brand that can convey that so they can create that impact, regardless of right. whether, whether they can afford it. So we've, we've got a grant that we fund um, through our profits. This is the current version that we have. It's like we've limited, okay. lim- we've, had, we've explored a bunch of different things. Right now, we have a grant that annually refreshes. It's a percentage of our profit. Uh, I won't be okay. specific about that, but it's an amount, it works out, works out to be about 20 grand a year at the moment, where we dollar match up oh. to 10 grand for impact businesses that need our help. And that's just the, okay. there's, we've worked out that pro bono is not respected. Like it doesn't, like, mm. it doesn't, and also the thing about charities is cha- a charity, a not for profit, is a tax benefit structure. It does not mean it doesn't mm-hmm. discount the value that the organisation that you're you're uh, contracting is providing. So mm-hmm. we we have a, a dollar matching grant, so it's essentially a 50 percent discount. So there is some some yeah. skin in the game it means yes. the work is respected. Yeah. But we get to do some cool work. Yeah. So we work for impact businesses, whether they're social enterprises, um, mm-hmm. not for profits, uh, impact yeah. startups, whatever it might be. And honestly, our team loves that work because we get to shape the impact. We get to be um, drivers of that impact and help these organizations with critical work so that they can, uh. they can thrive. Because what good is an yeah. organization that has a positive impact model, an idea, but nobody knows about it? Or they're, fail- yes. they're failing in their marketing. So for us, it's about that. Mm. that all, all brands should be good for the world, need to be good for the world, yeah. especially those that are at the coalface and creating massive impact. Yeah, or poten- yeah that's poten- definitely the core. Yeah, or potentially <laughs> can create massive impact and they, with our help they can. Yeah. 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 This is very meaningful and I completely resonate with what you're saying because unfortunately sometimes giving maybe is not completely aligned and genuine. Uh, and uh, it should make sense with the core business as well. For me, this this really resonates, and this this made me think and rethink uh, my impact, and now our impact, which we need to rethink in the team. So that's super powerful. Oh wow, really. And I know that um, your company is. Um, B Corporation, B Certified Corporation, which is also super magnetizing and attractive to me. Uh, and uh, I learned about B Corporations from your book, The Impact Brand Storytelling, and this definitely attracted me. Since then, I've been following the organization and uh, I really want uh, our uh, brand to be a B Corporation one day. That's that's a vision I have. So tell me more about uh, B Certified Corporation and your journey. I'm very curious about it. Yeah, I think my journey is a little uh, untypical. <laughs> uh, I was exposed to... So going back to when I had my purpose moment and in that year of 2016, I was very polarised and I decided I was not going to... I realised just not, just not helping organisations that were bad wasn't enough so I decided to build a an app which was the social sentiment of brands because I found it very difficult to find brands that were authentically good so this was like a tinder of uh, brands like good or bad and it was basically an algorithm that you presented you brands that were local to you you could su- you could submit them but you'd get you'd pl- it was a gamification of rating brands so that we could tell what brands are good or bad and Mm-hmm. Um, I worked with the uh, top uh, marketing professors around the world on this one in all the best schools and we developed a pathway to monetize this thing and it was all it was that seed funding and um, 
part of and luckily at the time my my wife was you need to focus on the sponge before you go down this path because it's going to be expensive and um make sure you get your <laughs> get yourself in order first so that that was backbone but in the process i was a, an author friend of mine he said amazing it's awesome idea looks like you're building a rating system have you seen b labs now at the time i was very 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 polarized this is like the good or bad no in between and i built this way to rate something and um i saw on the b labs website because b lab is the certification the not-for-profit that certifies b corps and i saw mm-hmm. ben and jerry's on there and i have to say at the time, I'd just come out of one of the businesses that I had run was a national weight loss company, so ice cream was evil. And the second thing, and any brand that peddles it is, in, was in my opinion back then, evil. And it was owned by Unilever. I was like, how the could, how the hell could, <laughs> you know, I'm a bit tame down my language, how the hell could that brand be good? No, nah, I'm, okay. not, I'm not having this. I'm going to certify and I'm going to change the system because uh, you can't change things from the outside. Right? So yeah. I started my certification process out of spite, which isn't typical. Now, then I met some cool people in Sydney where I was at the time in the B Corp community and one guy in particular was the nicest guy and his his approach, it kind of opened me up and I realized that there is a spectrum it's not one or the other it's not the polar it's the, the spectrum from dark to light and it became apparent to me my role is to help people come from anywhere on that spectrum towards the lighter end as long as there's the yeah. intent now um, so I, I, I completed my certification and then I went to this event in Sydney, which was a B Corp Leadership Development Day. And there was about 200 people there, which was, I think, very close to the full amount of B Corps that there were in Australia and most of them on the East Coast. And everybody that I bumped into, and I spoke to dozens of people on that day, everybody was doing something phenomenal with their business, using it as a force for good, as a vehicle for creating wow. the change. I was like, holy shit, this is my tribe. <laughs> this this is my wow. tribe. I, like Jim Rohn says, you are the average of the people, the five people that you spend the most time with. So I want to be more awesome. How do I be more awesome? Be around this awesome crowd. So yeah, I made a commitment on that day, mental, internal, that I would get to know every B Corp in Australia and befriend them. So over the, well, it's still going, but um, it's, it didn't happen as easy I thought as I thought, but I tried to get drinks regular get togethers going or restarted in Sydney. Mm-hmm. There was something there, but it just wasn't happening. Sydney's a bit of a pressure cooker compared to other parts mm. of Australia. And mm. um, it's very stressful. Everyone's it's not really a place to thrive easily. Right? It's more of a survival okay. really more of a survival mm-hmm. town, right? Um, I understand. So him. yeah, so when I when I moved up here to Brisbane, there was a couple of B corps that I connected with in my process of connecting, and I said I'm coming up. We're going to blow this thing up, and we came up here and um, we created this community, and it's it's now called Good North, and it's it's about getting purpose curious and purpose led people together because together we can do so much more than we can alone so the two, there's a dual purpose for good north one is to help uh, establish or create uh, purposeful connect meaningful connections and then the other the second mm-hmm. part is to foster collaboration real collaboration yeah so yeah what a good name good north good north what a lovely name yeah, the, the, won't tell <laughs> you what the name was before. <laughs> <laughs> and this covers Northeast Australia uh, region, this it, community. It, it it is. It's um, northern New South Wales and Queensland. But what COVID did, we started doing the speed networking for good events 
for, through COVID. Mm. And we were doing them every other week and we were getting people from all over the world attending because it kind of smashed the borders. So uh, one of... yeah. Yeah, one of one of the visions that we had before COVID was to do a an annual like we've got a we did a, an event called Earthbound, which mm. is a sustainable good business gathering, and we were the idea was we wanted to build that annually to something like a not a South by Southwest or a Burning Man, but um, a big thing, like the mecca of conscious business people coming, and then. You know, I've got a I've got a vision on my board of twenty five thousand people attending in twenty twenty five. Whether that's possible, whether it's online or whatever, but all these people yeah. coming together yeah. to learn what models are working, to then go back and be supported by the community, the Good North community, to implement those yeah. actions. So it, it's what a great idea! Yeah. Wow. So the Good North name was meant to be like a movement, a global movement. And it has the potential for mm. that, not just limiting just to this geography, even though it started here. Yeah. We'll see. We'll so see what I'm, I'm in Bulgaria, so I can join the Good North. Oh, know? yeah. I'm on the other side of the world. Absol- so absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, because now with COVID, and, and, and that's, I think, the positive thing that we learned uh, now more than ever, that we can be connected we can uh, still be united in our good cause and our good purpose, uh, no matter where we are. Yeah, and uh, 100%. So. One of the things we were looking at doing uh, as a path, a critical path for Good North, is to create a collaboration tool within the platform that allow that helps people connect over a shared purpose. What is it that you care about? And somebody in Byron Bay could care about the same thing. And as long as you, or a team, like, you know, it could be Singapore, Bulgaria, Byron Bay, uh, Nigeria, whatever, as long as people can get on, but have a way. And part of this is how do we teach real collaboration so that there can be both a surrender of what it is that you know about this for the greater good, same with everyone else, and the ability for everyone to pick up that commonality and run with it. So that's that's the challenge there of real collaboration is um, the the elimination of ego, you know. So 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 that's. Still- I mean, I think it's yeah. I think in this in this purpose led communities where people naturally are attracted to, it's much easier to leave the ego outside of the room. I I believe so. Well, you'd imagine uh, it's still it's still human nature to to have some ego. So it's how do we how do we create the framework to enable people to surrender to that and and mm. and do it with with honor, dignity, and you know, um, it, it's a challenge. Honestly, it's a challenge, and I don't know what the answer yeah. is yet. But I see that being yeah. a way that we can all accelerate the change that we're seeking because that's yeah. what we want I guess role modeling like uh, be the change you want to see and also it's, it's, it's maybe an educational process it's definitely that yeah where people are, 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 are learn these new ways of being and I think this happens naturally once they're connected with their core as you were talking about the brands and they have their core um culture mm. which is their purpose their vision their values so the more people are aware of their own core and their own values and purpose and vision they have this crystal clear then they're really able to let go of that ego because they they just don't need it i don't know if this makes sense to you but i believe in that it does and we're all on uh, various stages of our journeys for you, you're a very, True. you're a very conscious woman, and um, I go, I know that you get it, and you are that way. And I could, to a degree, I know that I've got room to improve. There are one of the things I've learned with um, Good North is got to meet people where where they're at. There are yeah, a lot of people come to our events, or uh, there's been many people that have come to our events who have no idea about purpose. And they've just yeah. jumped into a purpose pool. So all of a sudden they're like, whoa, like, what is this? Yeah. And that, yeah. that exposure 
they have to be nurtured. They have to be cared for because they'll, they'll drown yeah. or they'll have a, an experience where they'll feel out of their depth and never come back. And so how do you... True. How do you accommodate that? Right? Somebody might have a good intention but not understand. Or they might still be that old mm. way of thinking like, I'm all about the artistry. I'm all about this. What is this? Mm. Mm. You know, I kind of get it. Like I donate, but I don't... How do you connect that with business? So there is that... that then the framework, the education is is paramount. We need to ta- yeah, take definitely. people on that yeah. journey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I get you. This can be overwhelming. Yeah, you know what? Maybe we can have a, another conversation about this aside from this. And um, okay, so yeah, this, this being a very inspirational conversation, Luke, and I hope and I believe that it will inspire more brands and people out there in the world. And what is just one last thought or maybe a mantra or something you would love to share with uh, our audience, with our listeners? Mm. It, this, don't wait. Don't wait to start. There's never a right time. Or, or the, inver- mm. the inverse of that, now is always the right time, especially in COVID when you're feeling like, we can't spend time or energy on this. Your team needs you to spend energy and time on this. This is where you get to shape the future. And it's, it is like so, I want to swear, so freaking powerful to do this work now. And that doesn't mean you have to change your logo or change your name or change your website. But you do the work with your team now, they, they will yeah. like be renewed and you've got to do this. So, now is the time now is the time i love that don't wait now is the time Mm. wonderful oh thank you so much Luke, for this uh, empowering conversation and just one last thing where people can get in touch with you if they really want to magnetize their brands there are two ways i'm very active on linkedin my name is pretty unique so you'll find me uh, or secondly, jump on the Sponge website. There, are, We've got loads of resources there for free. Um, there'll be a pop-up of our, how to boost your, what's it? Our brand magnetism booster. It's a free resource. You don't even have to put your email in. Just click download and that'll show you how to start. And then if you want to do like what you did, um, measure your brand. There's a very, very quick free tool that you can do. It takes, I think, less than four minutes and you get it. You get a 25-page report, plus you get my book for free. So you can you can just start and transform your brand without ever having talking to me. But I would love to hear from you. If you do if you do it and you get some value out of it, just connect and say, hey, this is what I've found. And um, I'd love to hear from you. Yeah. Thank you so much, Luke. Thank you so much and take care. My pleasure. Thank you for this conversation. It's been amazing. Thanks for listening to the Thrive on Purpose podcast. If you're ready to embark on a transformational journey, you're most welcome to engage in a one-on-one conversation with Elena on the website thrivingleadership.net.